In this lesson, we'll continue our view of PSAT Reading Test 2, Section 1. We are still on the fourth passage out of five, and this is the dual passage I mentioned in the previous video. Always one dual passage on every release, PSAT and SAT. It's been on this founding document or great global conversation theme where you have an archaic passage, always persuasive by two different authors on the same subject and they're advocating slightly different positions and in the last video we did the independent questions with each passage one thoreau is advocating that men should follow their conscience in advocating how they should follow laws and two king is advocating that men should only follow just laws and disobey unjust laws because they are not laws at all and so we did the independent questions with one and two now we're going to do the dual passage, the one that really compare and contrast one and two, and we're in question number 35. So this is typically almost given on every single dual passage, the primary passage of each. You wanna be careful because this has to include both. It cannot be too descriptive because that would exclude one of the passages. So what do they both have in common? Let's look at the answers. Make an argument about the relationship between the individual and the law. This looks good because it, it doesn't really give any specifics. It doesn't state that man should follow his conscience or some moral authority, just making an argument, nothing specific. It's definitely about both passages, individuals following laws. And so the answer here is A, very broad answer. It's almost always given every, every dual passage one time. 36, both authors would most likely agree with which statement about people who obey their government statute. Another kind of broad question, don't try to avoid to be too specific here. So this is just saying in both passages, people who obey the governments. Let's look at A, they fail to follow the guidance of their conscience. Well, no, because conscience, right, this is only dealing with Thoreau. King was advocating some type of like moral authority. And so this is too specific, sort of like this question, but it only takes into account Thoreau's position. How about B, they are incapable of exercising moral authority. Again, this is King's position, it's too specific. They may not be acting in accordance with justice, all right? This doesn't really give any specifics. It just says they may not be acting in justice. It doesn't distinguish between conscience or, or a moral authority. It just says justice. And so the answer here is C for that one. How about 37? In the passages, a significant difference in how the two authors discuss morality is that Thoreau indicates what? Very few people follow their consciences while King indicates that most people consistently adhere to moral laws. This is not accurate. Most people follow their conscience because that would really set, let's go back to the passage again. I specifically remember him stating, Thoreau, that very few heroes, patriots, martyrs serve the state with their conscience. So the, the vast majority of people are blindly following the laws. So very few, that's not accurate for 37. Thoreau indicates that people should do what they judge to be right, while King indicates that people should follow a universal moral code. This, again, is making the accurate distinction between each author's position. King, the universal moral code, Thoreau, what they judge to be right in their conscience. And so the answer here is B. And the last question, 38. Assuming that he agrees with the assertions of the final paragraph of one, King would most likely recommend which course of action to Thoreau. Let's look at the last paragraph of Thoreau. So let's see, it's right here. And then it's a little bit at the top of the next passage. How does it become a man to behave toward the American government today? I answer that he cannot with the disgrace be associated with it. Cannot for an instant recognize that the political organization is my government, which is the slave's government also. So it's really talking about slavery and how should people follow the law relating to this. We know that King would view segregation laws, slavery, as unjust and they should not follow it. So we could almost predict this. And if you look a little bit later in reading King's passage, remember he said that they need to determine just and unjust and that unjust law is not a law at all. And this kind of sums it up toward the end of King's passage. In no sense do I advocate evading or defining the law as would the rabid segregationists by refusing to comply with the Supreme Court ruling. That would lead to anarchy. 
One who breaks an unjust law must do so openly and lovingly and with the willingness to accept the penalty. I submit that an individual who breaks the law that a conscience tells him is unjust and who willingly accepts the penalty of imprisonment in order to arouse the conscience of the community over its injustice is in reality expressing the highest respect for the law. So he would advocate breaking the law but doing so in open and notorious fashion and accepting the penalty. That's definitely how we react to slavery. And if you look at, let's look at the answer choices for 38. So King would recommend which course of action Thoreau should obey the laws upholding slavery while they're enforced, but should work to repeal them. No, they're not just. He wouldn't recommend obeying them. Thoreau should view the laws upholding slavery as immoral, but should not break them since doing so would lead to anarchy. Again, not accurate. Thoreau should break the laws upholding slavery. And in doing so, should neither hide his actions nor try to avoid punishment. This is exactly what King advocates. And so the answer here is C.